Did you visit Arizona recently? No? You look familiar. Okay. Um, just to finish that point, by the way, about how the Dolphins lost early, this is just another point, which is, if you're anything like me, the reason it's not depressing if a sports season ends is because the power of the Yates Sahara works like this. About one second after the team, your team loses, you look around and you find the other team that's starting again, like the Heat or whatever it is. That's, there's always something else to be distracted by. And it's good. It's fun. Okay, I have a question for you, gentlemen. And feel free to interrupt any time you want and uh, ask any questions or whatever. But here's my question for you. What's the difference between the Aseris Hadibros, Ten Commandments that were given at Har Sinai, and the other 603 mitzvos? It's a good question. I think it's a great question. In other words, there are 613 mitzvos. So what makes these ten special? But they're not even the first. Aren't they ten categories and other stem from them? Okay, there are ten categories and other stem from them. The fact that those ten in particular were specified and the others were just like the, the 613. Okay, yeah, but we now have to understand why were these ten specified. You might be onto something, categories, something like that. But even if I don't answer the question satisfactory, let's just love the question for a second. In other words, there are 613. Actually, there was once a time... When the ten, when the Aseris Debros were said by all of Klal Yisrael to say now Shema, and it was stopped because people thought these are the important ones. Everything else doesn't count for anything. That can't be. So it bears the question: like, you have brothers and sisters. Okay, so there's two boys and two girls. If I wanted to tell you about the four members of your family it would be pretty strange and maybe even disturbing if I singled out one and then there's the other three. Yeah. It would be disturbing. Like, you know, what's going on here? It doesn't make sense. So I once heard a bar mitzvah boy at his bar mitzvah explain this the following way, and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. Baruch Atah Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Sha'akol All the mitzvahs, the Ibn Ezra says, can be divided into three categories. They either are something that you have to accept in your heart, take into your heart, have an emotional thought about, or that, that kind of thing. That's one category. A second category is it something you're allowed to say or not allowed to say. We'll call that tongue. And a third category is something you have to do or not do. We'll call that hands, even though it doesn't necessarily have to do with hands. So, for example, not allowed to eat unshechted meat. What does that fit in? No. Hands, even though your mouth is... But, but, but tongue is just a representative of speech. Allowed to say, not allowed to say. Must say, shouldn't say, something like that. So not eating is action, okay? The myth says, love your neighbor as yourself. Which is that? It's the first one. Heart. It has practical applications in hands, for sure. But the basic is in your heart. Heart, tongue, and hands, Okay? We're going to divide the Aseris and Dibros based on this. First of all, are the Aseris and Dibros one category? No. What are the two categories? Oh. Oh, no. Okay, but they're not one category. How do you know they're not one category? Say again? Okay, very good. They could be an essay and Los Ase. That's always, all mitzvahs could be divided that way. But there's a more obvious com- division of the Aseris and Dibros because how many luchos were there? Two. Two luchos. Five and five, right? So if there's two luchos, then that must be sending us some message that there's two things going on here, right? So, for example, if I would put you two guys, brothers, in one room and your sister's in another room, that's reasonable because there's an obvious division here. If I did it, if I put you, who's older? Are you the oldest? Or are you number two? Because what I was about to say wouldn't work. But if I take the two oldest and the two youngest and divide them, and let's say it wasn't dependent on gender, that would also be reasonable. But the, there's a screaming message that it's on two luchos. One message is, I heard this from Rabbi Akiva Tatz once upon a time, I want you to be close to me, says Hashem. The other one is, I want you to be close to people. This is very important, by the way. Because if we confuse a mitzvah bein adam lechaver with a mitzvah bein adam l'makom, 
then it will end up that a mitzvah bein adam lechaveru between you and a friend could end up like a mitzvah like between you and God. And let me explain what I mean by that. If I have to daven mincha, and I notice that the sun has set, then that's a mess up. I needed to daven mincha, and I forgot, and, I, and now shkia was an hour ago. Problem. I would view that as a problem. Maybe you would say, score. That's awesome. I'm glad I missed it. Okay, but I would view it as a problem. I missed my chance. I should have done something right. What happens if you hear that a friend, a person that you know, is in the hospital? So it triggers inside of you, I should go visit him. Then you hear, actually, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. He's already out of the hospital. I didn't get a chance to visit him. Is that good news or bad news? Great news. It's great news because you have a heart, because you're a thinking, normal, rational, loving person, because you love other people. If you think it was a mitzvah opportunity and I didn't do it, you would go, shucks, he got better. If you're nuts, okay? Why don't you make a bracha before giving somebody tzedakah? A few explanations about this, but one is because if you make a bracha before giving somebody tzedakah, you just turn them into a lulav. The guy is at your door, and, oh, one second. You need money? Let me go get my gartel. Put it in my suit, get my gartel. Buri chatu Hashem lekaini me lechoelam. Lasse tzedakah. He just turned him into a lulav. You shook him like, like he's, a, he's an object. But you really want to show him love. He needs money. You take care of him. A drink, food, a conversation, and the money that he came for. So they're coming from a different place. The ones between you and Hashem are to serve Hashem and be close to Hashem. The ones between you and people are not so that you serve Hashem. Hashem wants you to love other people. That's the root of them. So this is not a test. You don't have to answer any questions. But we've got to divide these ten into the two halves. So let's try to list the first five. Should I do the listing, or does somebody here want to offer it up? Anochi Hashem means that you have to believe in Hashem, yeah? Number two? What did you say? Okay, there are no other gods. Do not have other gods. Very good. That's la- it's much later. Don't say Hashem's name in vain, or more specifically, don't make a vow that isn't true while you took God's name. Okay? It's so often said that way, but that's well, just to clarify. Keep Shabbat. Keep Shabbat for, this guy's an Keep expert in the Ten Commandments. What's that? Okay, that's already mentioned. That's number four. Very good. Honor your parents. Okay, okay so that's, those are the first five. Excellent. Let's just clarify that honoring your parents connects you to God, because when you see something as source and you respect the fact that you come from something, eventually you find Hashem. And the structure of, of showing honor to somebody from whom I come, is connected to serving Hashem, even though it could be viewed as between us and people. Okay, the first five review. Ready? I am Hashem. Don't have other gods. Don't take Hashem's name the wrong way. Keep Shabbat. Honor Shabbat. Remember Shabbat. Okay, and honor your parents. Let's divide these carefully between the original categories we said. Heart, tongue, and hands. And, if, and extra credit if you haven't said anything yet and you call out. Okay? Then you get extra credit. Seven points. Okay. Knowing that Hashem exists. I am Hashem. Which, one, which category is that? Brain. Brain, which we'll call here heart. It's a knowledge piece. It doesn't require of me action. It doesn't make me allowed to say something, permitted to say, told to say anything. So that one is heart. Don't have other gods. That could be true. It's, a, it's essentially heart. Don't ascribe to anything else that that's God. Even the guy in the mirror, by the way. Don't think he's God. Okay? Don't have, don't have other gods is also heart. Do not take Hashem's name in vain. Easy. No. Nope. That's tongue. You're not allowed to say a certain thing. That's tongue. Okay? Okay, that's already number two. Okay? Number three is don't stay, say something that you're not allowed to say. Number four, I'm going to answer this one myself because it's a little complicated. Zachor and Shamor about Shabbos means say that it's Shabbos. Make Kiddush. Say good Shabbos. That's Zachor at Yom HaShavah And Shamor means don't do the Malachas. That's action. 
to double whammy. We started with heart, heart. Number three is tongue. Number four is tongue and action. Last one is honor your parents. It's really all of them. It's really all of them, but Chazal say that kibud ava'im means to take them to the airport, to bring them back, to, to give them food, to give them a drink, to put clothing on them. It's all because of, but, but kibud is actions. Okay? Yira of parents is other things. But kibud is actions. And that means that it's action. So I want to go back again. Rabbi said, listen closely. This is important. And is the answer to our original question. I am Hashem heart. Don't have other gods heart. Don't take God's name in vain. Tongue. Shabbos is tongue and action. Kabedah Sabicha Vesmech is action. Goes from heart to your tongue to your actions. All the way out into you. Okay? Got me on that one? Watch the opposite happen on the other side. Don't murder. Action. Don't commit adultery. Action. Don't kidnap. Don't bear false witness in court. Tongue. You can't say a lie to the, to the, to the base den. Tongue. Don't desire other people's things. Heart. On the first side, it was heart, told tongue, all the way out into action. On the other side about people, action, 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 tongue, heart. Yeah? We're on the same page? No problem. No problem at all. I just want to suggest, this is what the Bar Mitzvah boy said many years ago. And I want you to hear this clearly because I think it helps us in life. I want to suggest that the Aserah Sadibros, the Ten Commandments, are teaching us fundamentally what Hashem wants from us. What separates them? It's true it was said that they're categories. But here there's a, there's a pattern here that's teaching us something very, very deep and loving and important. Which is that when it comes to our relationship with Hashem, which is the first side, you might think that heart is enough. I can do whatever I want. God and I, we have an understanding. I accept Him into my heart. A lot of religions are based on this, by the way. This is the heart and soul of Christianity, by the way. Do whatever you want. Take Him into your heart and everything's going to be a good. Don't believe that. That's not true. Hashem wants us to know him, to love him, to fear him, all kinds of hard things. But he also wants us to behave a certain way. He wants us to not speak a certain way. He wants us to, 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 to take what we feel and know and put it out into our actions. Sometimes you don't want to daven marav. It's 10 p.m., you realize you didn't daven marav. Heart's not anywhere near it. But the action says, I gotta, I gotta, Shem wants me to do it. I gotta, I gotta try to do the best I can. The message on the Bain Adam al-Makom side is, in case you think hard is enough, let it go. By the way, Rav, Rav Hirsch says about tefillin, that tefillin are like ideas that become part of a collective idea that flow over my heart and come out into my actions. So I follow that on tefillin? Separate ideas that come into one. Now they're one idea. They're over my heart and they come out into my actions. That's what Hashem wants from us. He wants us to take things we have in our heart and make it our actions. But it's the opposite when it comes to our relationship with other people. I'm sure in this small group of people, there's sometimes some tough dynamics. The guy's a nerd. He bothers me. He's in my chair, whatever it may be. Something. Are there ever any issues between you guys? Mm-hmm. Or it's all hunky-dory? Sometimes, yeah? That's life. And in America, the law suggests that the only thing that we can say about our relationship with other people is about action. Don't murder. Don't do these bad things to somebody else. Leave them in space. But America would never say, don't speak lush and horror about somebody. Free speech. Say whatever you want. Certainly the American law would never say, don't covet somebody else's car, house, wife, nothing. They never say that. That would be like a mashuga. What are you talking about? But here's the thing. Hashem wants us to become refined people. He wants us to become whole. To become whole with Hashem is to take the ideas that I feel in my heart and turn them into action. To become whole with other people is to accept that I shouldn't do bad actions to them and I should do certain good actions to them, but also learn to love them, not speak about them, and all the way in that I, I fully embrace that I'm here for other people. So the message of the Sarah is when it comes to God, don't stop 
at how you feel, act a certain way. And when it comes to people, don't stop at how you act. Learn to feel a certain way. That's what we're still trying to become. Everyone is trying to become that. I'm working as hard as possible to try to become that. I don't really like people that much. He tells me, uh, my host, or Jonathan Dagme, that he makes little short clips and sends them out to other people. I hope he doesn't use that as my clip. Okay? But I don't, yeah. you know, you never know yeah. these days. You, you guys could be taping me. I don't know. I, I, I'm working on myself. I'm trying to become more loving. It's not so easy. It's a little easier to not do the wrong things to people. But Hashem says, I want you to be whole. The Sarah Sidibros say, I want you to be whole. I want you to take what you feel in your heart for me and put it into action. And I want you to take the actions that you do or don't do to people and bring it all the way into your heart so you become somebody who loves everybody else. Any questions, Rabbi Say? Any comments? Come on, aren't you supposed to say at this point like that was the most amazing thing I ever heard? Practicing like loving another person. Like even if I do the right things for them, like how can I start practicing deep in the world? The Sefer Hachinuch says in many places that the person's actions turn them into a certain kind of internal person. In the language of the Sefer Chinuch, it says, Adam nif'al achar pe'ulotav. A person becomes what his actions are. Now, this is very different than Western society. In Western society, we say, I'm not feeling it, so I'm not going to do it. The Torah says there are rules. Do it, and it will inform you about becoming something. You give away your money to poor people, you learn to love poor people. So it's ironic that even though I'm saying it's not enough to only do. The path to becoming loving is by doing. So just do and then let it fall into place? Mostly. I mean, you can also learn, you learn Sifri Musar and you learn to appreciate people. Listen, we all have a problem. It's very challenging. We have problems with other people. The question is, what are we focused on? Rabbi Noah Weinberg said about a separate thing, a very interesting idea. He said, anybody in this room love to play basketball? Like, love to play basketball. Anybody? Yeah, you love to play basketball. How long would you play for if you could? Like, hours. I, I play for hours sometimes. You play for hours. Is there a good outdoor park here? No, but I, like, I can, can go to gyms. Okay, so you play for hours. And you, did you notice while you're playing that you're exhausted? No. Why not? Because I love it. Okay, so let's say we take the scoreboard away and we take the ball away and you do all the same actions. If you ran back and forth like that, the first thing you'd notice is, I hate this. You'd say, this is exhausting. So the only difference between the two things is what you're focused on. You're doing the same thing, but what you're focused on changes. So when it comes to interpersonal relationships, we have a problem. We have to work on it, which is that we may notice the problem in people more quickly than we notice the positive. So I see that guy as the guy who always sits in my chair. I see that guy as the guy who always smells. That's not really what he is. He might be an amazing father. He might be an amazing friend. He might be a genius. He might be the guy who always knows the directions. He might be a good person. So it takes focus to decide, I want to see the good in people and good in situations. How do you do that? It's, kind of, it's complicated. Some people have a predisposition the wrong way. I'll, I'll end with this, and I love this idea. I heard it many years ago from Rabbi Michal Tversky from Milwaukee. When Moshe Rabbeinu is going to take Klal Yisrael out of Mitzrayim, Hashem says, take the staff with you. You're going to turn the staff into a snake. You know that story, right? So it starts with Hashem saying to Moshe, Ma zebiyadecha? What do you have in your hand? And Moshe responds. Anybody know the Hebrew word Moshe says? Moshe responds, mate. I have a stick, I have a staff. How does Hashem, what, Hashem has to ask Moshe Rabbeinu what he has in his hand? Crazy. Hashem knows what he has in his hand. Must be that Hashem is saying to Moshe, focus on what you have in your hand. What do you have in your hand? He says, mate. The, the Hebrew word mate means staff, but it also means to tilt something one way or the other. So what do you have in your hand? What you have in your hand is mate. How you tilt something. Many years ago, a family member of mine, we were short on cars. We needed to go on a trip, short on cars. A certain family member of mine arranged that we could borrow a car, and the car had a not a great smell. Not a great smell. 
So when the, when, the, when the car came to the house that we're going to take this third car, it didn't smell great. I, and some people said, I can't go in this car. It, it was not so bad. Okay. I can't go in this car. This car stinks. Okay, that's a choice. Right now we have a way to go to the amusement park. If it would be putrid beyond belief, okay, it's not a choice. This thing is, in, is not qualified for this. But very often something is qualified for this situation. We can go to the amusement park. We can all go now. What are you focused on? You're focused on the fact that this car doesn't smell as lovely as the other cars? What's in your hand? Hashem said to Moshe, Mata. What's in your hand is how you see it, how you tilt it. It's not so simple. You're on the right track. Because the best thing that can ever happen to a person is being around other great people. If you're around great people, they lift you up. You're around your rabbeim, they lift you up. You're around your chaverim, they lift you up. Stay in the group of B'nai Torah and aspiring B'nai Torah, people who want to grow. Stay in the Jewish group together with your friends. It'll lift you up. And, and, we, and we work on ourselves. And we learn more. And you welcome speakers and you listen and you talk and you ask your rabbi for help and you ask your friends for help and you'll be able to tilt most situations to the right way. It's a lifetime struggle though. Okay? Thanks for having me, Rabbi Yisai. My pleasure.